it's late. I know it's late, but when you have a giant massive headache the size of Texas in your brain to where it's really hard to think, let alone see, your priorities shift from doing a video to actually getting some shut eye and resting your brain. But now my headache's gone. I just watched Raw, so let's do this. Honestly, guys, <laughs> pretty cool. All I have to say is pretty cool. Seeing the intro with Stephanie McMahon, I'm not going to lie. Stephanie McMahon, she always thinks that she's the biggest dog in the yard. Or whatever the other way phrase of saying it, however. But it was really nice of Big Show not to knock her completely silly. It was nice that he didn't do that. But honestly, it was even more rewarding towards the end. But let me... Let me, before I get to the end, I'm just going to go through some of the segments and some of the matches. Now, here's a match that kind of did irk me a little bit. And this was a Divas match. And you know me. For those that see my, my videos, you know I'm going to talk about the Divas. Why, oh why, did you hire a 19-year-old that you know you're not going to allow to wrestle? It's a given. Not everybody is comfortable with wrestling with JoJo because of her age, because of her being young and the fact that she's accident prone. Why have her out there when she's not going to do anything for two years? Why even bother putting her in a uniform or in, in a wrestling her wrestling attire when she's never going to wrestle? Even Marie is going to be well seasoned by the time she's able to even have her first match. So why bother having her go out there with Natalia if you know you are not going to have her wrestle? That's a waste of her time. That's a waste of her talent. And she's going to get ring rust for her first match, which is jacked up. Did they just hire her strictly for Total Divas and that's it because of her looks? Honestly, for TNA, for gut check, when you had these kids that were 18 years old, when you had these kids that were 19 years old, barely in their 20s, not even legal yet. What did they do? They turned them away because they didn't think that they were well seasoned enough. They did not think that they had enough experience to be out there. They did not want them to be injured for their first performance. That's why they turned them away. But what did they do with AJ? They hired, not AJ, but what did they do with JoJo? They hired a 19 year old that is not going to be wrestling anyone for two more years. Why bother? Seriously, why bother? It's a waste of time for her and it's, it's, it won't do her any good. It's pretty much for Eva Marie. The whole thing is for Eva Marie. And that's jacked up. I'm sorry that this turned into a rant, but it's just something that really did kind of piss me off a little bit. Not only that, there was one other thing that kind of irked me. Why on earth are you going to have a ridiculous WWE app choice for people to vote on whoever's going to be a special guest referee? I have two issues with that. Number one, it's just like doing a multiple choice test. You have one obvious answer and two dumb ones. That's pretty much what it was. You had two dumb answers, and the two dumb answers were Booker T and Bob Backlund. Number one, nobody really cares much about Booker T anymore since Booker T left. And number two, no one knows who Bob Backlund is. I do, but if you're like, if you were born in the 2000s, the early 2000s, maybe late 90s, you're not going to have a clue who Bob Backlund is, let alone why he's screaming at you. So why have these two ridiculous choices when there's one obvious one, Shawn Michaels? We all knew that Shawn Michaels was going to be the guy to be voted on. So why, why have this ridiculous option on the WWE app just for the sake of people getting on your app when you don't even need it. You have millions of downloads. Why does it matter? And not only that, in my humble opinion, I really do feel that this Hell in a Cell match, especially if this is the last Hell in a Cell pay-per-view ever, why have a special guest referee to taint the entire feel of the match? This is Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. This feud has been heating up for what nearly two months now it's a pretty heated feud it doesn't need a special guest referee messing that up we all know that Shawn michaels is in there as a part of the storyline for triple h he's gonna screw somebody over 
But the thing is, this is a well-heated match. This is a match that needs to die. Like, seriously, this is a feud that needs to die. It needs to end somehow. I don't want this in Survivor Series. I want something fresh and new in Survivor Series. I want to be like Survivor Series. And I know a lot of people may disagree with me for that. But still, I really just disagree to have Shawn Michaels in this match at all. I don't think he should even be involved. But then they end up throwing some, some legend in there, and it's going to be all about him. Not purposely. He didn't really choose it to make it that way. It's going to be all about Shawn Michaels and who is he going to allow to win. That's what it is. It's going to take all the essence away from that match. And that's just the one thing that bothers me the most. <sighs> but moving on from there. Can we please stop having Vicky Guerrero in some kind of ridiculous love interest, trysts, whatever, admirers? Can we just stop? Stop fooling ourselves. I'm not saying that Vicky Guerrero is ugly. She is far from being ugly. She's quite an attractive woman. But for crying out loud, I would rather see her in a business in, in, in a business mode than see her in a loving mode. Like, I, I don't want to see her in lover mode, please. I've seen too many... Oh, how, how long was it? Was it like four months of her and Edge being married? That's just something that I couldn't stomach. And then her and Big Show getting together... The thing is, is that I'm tired of her having a love interest. I just want her to be a shrewd businesswoman. And the thing is, why is she even there when it's not SmackDown? Why is she calling a match when it's not SmackDown? Makes no sense. And honestly, those are just my major gripes. Seriously, those are just my major gripes. It doesn't affect the overall viewing of the show because the show was pretty darn good. The way the storyline actually went from Battleground onto Raw was pretty good. I'm not going to deny that, and I'm not going to hate on that at all. But there is one major thing that I'm going to hate on that I completely forgot. Besides those four things that I mentioned, and I think there were four. But there's one thing that really pissed me off. John freaking Cena getting a title shot when he didn't do anything to get one. Okay. Okay, I'm tired of seeing guys being rewarded for not doing anything when you can possibly have somebody else in the running. Like, there's nothing wrong with John Cena. I'm not hating on him as a person. I'm not hating on him as a wrestler. I, it just really makes me upset. The fact that they think that, okay, Alberto Del Rio is probably the most boring champion there is. So we have, we really don't care much about this belt. So, and nobody really cares about it, but we really do want to have someone hyped up because of the whole Randy Orton thing. We got to have somebody hyped up for this championship. So what are we going to do? Throw John Cena in there. Instant gold. Come on, man. You can do a better feud than that. I mean, you could do something with Alberto Del Rio that can make it worthwhile since RVD couldn't pull his weight. You end up having somebody else in there. John Cena has to be your choice. And then there were some matches going on between. It was actually interesting to see Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston going at it. We all know about their feud. We all know that Randy Orton buried Kofi Kingston, making him impo making it impossible for him to go further than the mid card. And actually seeing him wrestle with Randy Orton and just lose, it's just a kick in the face. It's just an insult to him. That's just how I see him. It. It's just an insult to him. But honestly, guys... The, more, the, the, the most satisfying ending of this entire show, this most satisfying segment of this entire show was the ending. Seeing the big show finally get his comeuppance by knocking the ever-loving crap out of Triple H was something that was somewhat satisfying because that means that my giant came back. Whether or not it's for the last time for a while, it still was satisfying to see my giant come back for maybe a brief minute. I, it just made me so happy. It really did. I was like, yeah! Like, I was just so, I was so crying to actually see that. I really, I really was happy. But, honestly, guys, the overall show really wasn't horrible. But I will say that the matches were pretty random. Especially seeing Fandango with Zack Ryder. And that's just the one thing that also bothers me. It's really sad to see Zack Ryder practically struggling like this and just get noticed. You don't even hear his music anymore. You barely hear his music. You hear Fandango's. 
It's nothing really wrong with Fandango. It's just the fact that Fandango is getting stale. It's getting always getting stale. It needs a new gimmick. It's just ridiculous. And speaking of new gimmicks, can we please find something for the, the real Americans to do? Can we find a completely new gimmick for them? And what I mean by that is you can't be an anti-immigrant anymore. You can't have an anti-immigrant theme if you have an immigrant on your team. Okay. I'm not going to go into rant mode. This for a whole nother time. But as for the overall show, I will say this. It did stick to what happened at Battleground. It did kind of give you how the, the, the overall emotion of how, what happened after Battleground, what was going to happen with Brad Maddox, which is what they showed, and how Triple H and Stephanie retook over the entire show. And it kind of stuck to that. And I like that transition. So I'm not going to completely hate on that. The matches themselves, some, most of them were random, but some of them actually stuck to the overall, you know, happening to what happened after Battleground. So that's fine. And also, and, and as for the Los uh, Mentadores, whatever, if <laughs> the bull is more over than y'all. Like, seriously, for your debut, your debut was worthless because your matches are going to be forgettable. And that's the sad part. These guys did everything for their debut to go right. And they did it right. But the problem is they had a third party. That's like adding a chick and a guy group. We all know what's going to happen. The chick's going to get more popular. You add a little bull to your Manador group, who's going to be more popular? The bull. And you're not. Your match is going to be really forgettable, no matter how good they are. People are going to be looking forward to seeing the bull. Not you, the bull. That's your blunder. You should have just came out with being a duo instead of a trio. Guys, I can literally rant on all night, <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. Here are my overall thoughts on Raw. The show actually did a good job sticking to the transition from Battleground to Raw. I'm not hating on that. But as for those things that I ran about that I mentioned, it just makes no sense to me at all. But I'm not going to actually use that. I'm not going to put that against the show. I'm going to say that the show really did stick to the transition between Battleground to Raw, and that was pretty good. And the overall ending was very satisfying, and the opener started off to how it's supposed to be. But the matches themselves, I've already had my rant about that, but I am not going to put a big stamp of bad on it because of that I ran about. So I'm going to say the overall show was okay. It was average. It wasn't horrible, but it was average with a very satisfying ending. The middle was average, the beginning was great, the ending was even better. That, there you go, that's my overall thoughts. And honestly guys, I did see Battleground, I did do a preview as well as a review. If I can get it put up, I'll put it up on my Wrestling Fan Nation page for y'all to see if y'all are still interested. But my but guys, overall thoughts for me, you've already heard, I wanna hear what your overall thoughts are. Leave a comment in the comment section below and send me a video response on your thoughts on this past Raw. And yeah, I'm doing it on Thursday, so I still want to hear y'all's opinions about it. It's Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out. Later.